Hey, LeBron, Frank mentioned that you really changed the whole game in that third quarter with the aggressive drives to the paint and finishes at the rim. Was there anything that you noticed either first half or adjustments in the second half in the way you approached that? Yeah, just making adjustments. Um, I was reading the game. I wasn't reading the game um, like I would like to in the first half. So uh, came back into the locker room, uh, made some mental adjustments, um, you know, for me individually that I felt like would work for our team. And, and we was able to, you know, to, to spark a run in third. You mentioned so many times last year during the bubble run about you know not having the home fans, uh, not playing in front of fans. I just wondered what tonight felt like and how you thought that might have impacted the game. Uh, I mean, it's always special to play in front of the Laker faithful. Uh, we hope our numbers continue to rise as the series goes on. Uh, we can get more and more fans in the building, um, but it's a beautiful thing. Um, hasn't been a playoff game for the Lakers and Staples Center since uh, 2013, so it was a special night. And uh, we just try to reward our fans um, with their loyalty uh, that they have for us and just try to play the game the right way. Dave McMiniman. LeBron, maybe the moment the fans seemed to enjoy the most was late when you were yo-yoing the ball with Crowder guarding you in isolation and then eventually you scored on the reverse layup. Uh, you've had your run-ins with Crowder in the past. I don't even know if that play was motivated by that or just, you know, you, you, you feel in the moment. Uh, can you just walk us through uh, – What's that like for you to, to feel the, the arena, um, you know, in, enjoying the moment in, in a late playoff game that you guys are taking control of? Um, always, you know, for, for, for me and for our ball club, we always try to make uh, plays um, where we can get each other excited. We can get our, uh, our fans involved, get our fans excited about it. Um, and um, because it just it brings so much excitement to the game. Um, it's a moment, things can be momentum swings that, you know, it can, it can work in our favor. Um, so, um, that, that was one of those instances where we, um, you know, had an opportunity to kind of make a momentum play and was able to deliver. And Wookie. LeBron, uh, kind of a two part question. What did, what did you make of Devin Booker's foul on Dennis? And then kind of along those lines, do you feel like your guys sort of size and physicality has them a little flustered in this series? Uh, well, I thought the play wasn't a basketball play. Uh, many times someone gets airborne, um, you know, shoving them out the air can be very dangerous. Um, so that's that. Um, two, um, you know, we, we, we're not looking at it like that. We're just trying to play our game. Uh, we want to continue to, um, um, you know, get the ball in the paint, uh, but we want to shoot the ball. Um, and I thought Wes Matthews game ball to him. He did a great job of spreading the floor tonight and, and opening up for us, um, opening them lanes up with his, uh, uh, his back to back threes that he had. So, um, you know, whatever, whatever game, you know, every game is going to be different and we have to be able to adjust to it. Bill Oram. LeBron, what's been your view of what Chris has been dealing with in this series? And, you know, he's obviously been battling through that shoulder in all three games um, and obviously was on the floor uh, in the fourth. What, what's just been your view of kind of what he's been going through for his team and, and, and kind of what this series has been like for him? Um, I don't know. I mean, that's a CP question, obviously. Um, you know, when he's on the floor, uh, we, we treat him exactly what he is. And he's a Hall of Famer, a guy that can make plays, a guy that can uh, read defenses like none other, a guy that can uh, exploit you if you're not on your P's and Q's at all time when he's on the floor. And uh, that, that is our mindset. Al Gunn. Hey, LeBron, I know it's nothing new for, for you to kind of experience, you know, people speculating about, your health, your ability, all these things. Um, but in, in sort of with everything that's gone on with your ankle this season, did something just feel good about being able to drive like you did tonight and, and showing people that you're, you're very capable of that right now? Um, well, I mean, it, it feels good for me personally to be able to, to make plays for our team, for my teammates. That's all I care about. I don't care about what anyone else thinks outside of our locker room, outside of our support system, outside of our group. Um, I've always been that way. Um, obviously, it's been a rough year on me as far as physically uh, with my ankle and dealing with that and still trying to get it back to where it was before the injury. Um, but every day is a, is, a, is a step forward, and I'm um, going to continue to put the work into it with my treatment uh, around the clock, uh, getting it to, like I said, uh, to where it was before the, before the injury. Um, and until then, my teammates will continue to hold me down, and I'll try to make plays for them. Mark Medina. LeBron, obviously, Anthony had a really good performance tonight, but considering what he was going through with his injury, what jumped out to you as far as what his mentality was to make that happen? 
Um, just aggressive. Um, looking for a shot, getting into the paint, um, you know, getting fouled, and knocking his free throws down. He's just um, ultra aggressive right now since game one. And we're going to need that uh, to continue to happen. Um, and like I said, you know, it starts with him, you know, and trickles off to me. I'm able to make some things happen. But uh, when he's aggressive, um, we're all aggressive. Last two questions, Melissa Rowland. Hey, LeBron, on the flip side of having so many fans back in arenas, you were vocal about one of the incidents involving a fan yesterday. Do you think enough has been done to protect the players? Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's been enough done to protect the players, but we got to continue to do that. Um, and the NBA did a great job, and also the respective teams, uh, Philly, New York, and I also seen uh, Utah as well, um, protecting our players um, by banning the individuals that um, – had these instances that's uh, not a part of uh, cheering for your fans or heckling players or uh, being as loud as you can. Um, all the heckling, that's great. Um, you know, we, we, we don't mind that. We're we going to hear the booze. We understand that. Maybe be a, a couple curse words here and there. Uh, you know, and we understand that as well. Um, I actually, I love that. Um, I'm absolutely okay with that. But there's a line, and I think uh, we're all we're all grown, and we all, we all know what the line is when you cross it. So, um, you know, to see – you know, Russ get popcorn thrown on him, uh, you know, leaving the game um, to see, um, you know, Trey Young uh, spit, get spit on um, and, and to hear about Josh's family, um, you know, in the crowd in Utah. Those are things that's not going to represent our league, uh, represent our players or represent these respective teams. And those teams handled it with the uh, utmost uh, professionalism. So, um, you know, kudos to the league, kudos to the Knicks, Jazz um, and, you um, uh, Philly, um, and we want to continue to move forward. Last question, Barry Bloom. Hey, LeBron, just uh, more globally, when you were winning championships in Miami and Cleveland, you were kind of creating your own history there. Here, you're part of a, a massive history with the extension of the, of, of the contract to play here till 2041. Your banner will be up there. The championship banners you win will be up there, just like all the others that you're looking at right now. How much of a sense of of that history do you have? Um, I got uh, every sense of the history of this Laker franchise. I'm a historian of the game, um, you know. First of all, so even before I got here, I knew the history of the Lakers franchise. I understood uh, where it started in Minneapolis, come over here, and uh, what year it came to Los Angeles, and known the history of the players that. Uh, came before me before I signed here um, in the history from the 60s uh, all the way to the, uh, you know, 2000s to the 2010s and things and the players and the owners um, and the, the coaches and, and, and the, the memorable shots and the memorable plays and memorable everything, you know, of, of this franchise. Um, and it's a, it's a historical franchise uh, up there with a lot of other great franchises as well. I'm not going to name them because we're talking about the purple and gold right now. So, um, I relish this opportunity. I'm, uh, it's, it's, it's been an honor uh, to be a part of this franchise for the last three years, I think I've been here. I, I, feel, <laughs> I think it's been three years. Um, and I will continue to uh, uh, love, be, you know, uh, being a part of this Lakers organization and be a part of the history. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Yep. Have a good day off. Thank you.